And welcome back to Wesley College, everyone. And a special edition of uh, High School of Lacrosse Girls, High School of Lacrosse St. Mark's, and Cesar Rodney. And we say keep your eyes on our social media. This is why, because this is the last second edition. Mike Lang, Jason Winchell, Nick Halliday, Big Ed Halliday, Len Evans. And we think Twitter Ryan is going to be joining us at some point here at Scott Miller Stadium here in Dover. And there is a, an early shot for St. Mark's. Is, we are 30 seconds into this one and a save for Jasmine Hall, the keeper for Cesarati. St. Mark's off to a good start, coming off a win against Padua earlier this week, and it was about 40 or 45 degrees colder than it is today. Yeah, they're ranked second in the state, Mike, in our poll behind Cape Henlopen, who won big over Archmere today. So we play 25 and a half in the girls' games as opposed to the 12 minute quarters for the uh, boys. And we will get you the numbers and names as we can. That is Paige McGargy, number four up top, along with, lost my numbers here, Sadie Leonard, number six for St. Mark's. A couple of high scores at St. Mark's, Claire Estes, Meg Noonan, uh, Kendra Schweitzer does some scoring. Scoring, she's done over 200 goals in her That's some career. some scoring then. She will be playing at University of Delaware. Another block by Hall. We have a whistle. Not sure what the call is here. We play with a running clock for the most part in the girls game. Hall plays it out, but she misses her outlet and rolls out of bounds. It's going to go back to St. Mark's. St. Mark's in the white uniforms. They are technically the home team here at the Dave Reynolds Lacrosse Festival. And they have the yellow and green and white striped skirts. And there's a shot saved by Hall. She's got a couple early saves. Yeah, she's looked impressive early, Mike. Like you said, a couple early saves in this one. Uh, St. Mark's is a high-powered offense. If you haven't seen them play, they are fun to watch. As they get the Turn steal. Over in front, and Hall with another block. St. Mark's picks up that ground ball. That's Meg Noonan. A whistle stops play. We're going to have a free opportunity here. So here they're going to make the defender play behind the attacker. I believe that is Meg Noonan is going to get the shot. And the whistle goes. We'll see what happens. And she does not go with the shot. She's going to play it up top. That was number seven for St. Mark's. Gabrielle O'Neill, and there's a shot and a score by Kendra Schweitzer, and she puts the Spartans up at 22 of 4 to go in the first half, one nothing. Yeah, Mike, we mentioned her being a great goal scorer and uh, over 200 in her career, and she adds the f gets the first one in this game. So it's been all Spartans offense so far. It's been the great goaltending by Cesar Rodney, making this only a one nothing game so far. 22.04 left in the first half. Like Mike said, 2.25 minute halves. Clock only stops on goals until the last two minutes of a half. And I believe 10 goals is a running clock in girls lacrosse. Lots of whistles in girls lacrosse, Mike. But the clock keeps going, so it'll be good along. Yeah. Face off's a little different than the boys, too. They have the sticks are waist high. And the referee... Blows up in the air, goes, and this one is picked up by Backman. But just like the boys, face-offs and ground balls are very important. Gracie Backman being marked by Paige McGargy. She gets it off to Lillian Ayers. Sees Rodney lost to Polytech the other day. Polytech is third ranked in our poll, just behind St. Mark's. They also play on 100 yards of the field, so yes. the Nets are on the football goal lines. And you see the blue scoring circle. Bachman in front looking for it, but it's played behind the net by Casey Cava. And here is yeah, number 12, Steele. So some bonus lacrosse coverage for you today on 302 Sports. Yeah, Mike, like, like you said, always pay attention to our social media pages because this was, we're here anyway f 
in between the boys and the girls game. Uh, in between the two boys game. So why not do this one, you know? Right now, Cesar Rodney is controlling the offense. And like I said in the boys game, Mike, best defense is time possession offense. Pass inside is loose picked up by the Spartans. And their keeper is Jackie Stofa, number 28. And she's being uh, blocked there by Kava, but gets it out. And the Spartans are going to try to get something started here. They lead 1-0. We are about four and a half minutes into this one. That is Schweitzer bringing it up. Sends it. Uh, I missed that number of that truck. That's one thing the Spartans have, Mike, is they're very speed. They got speed on it, and that's what you need in girls' cross. It's like you said, the field is a lot longer in the girls' game. Pass for Estes goes out of bounds. But what a contest we have here today. Elizabeth Isaacs bringing it up, but it's picked off. That is Estes. She's marked by two players. Down she goes, and it's going to be St. Mark's ball. Nineteen thirty-three left in the first half. The Spartans with the one nothing lead. Mike play behind the net. One thing about St. Mark's numbers are not very bright so sometimes the ones down by the goal line are a little bit difficult to see but I can tell Claire Estes with the red hair she's easy to pick apart number three is Megan, Megan Noonan. Noonan her pass for Estes is loose but we have a whistle not sure what the call is here I think it'll be a free possession for St. Mark's Everyone has to be get behind. Well, another great save there, Mike. Yeah, Hall's been pretty good early on. Just a reminder, too, we will bring you, be bringing you the nightcap. St. Mark's Caesar Rodney boys lacrosse. About 20 minutes after this one ends. It's played by St. Mark's. This is Schweitzer. She goes up top, looks for some room. She's got it. Shot in. Another save by Hall. That's at least five saves so far yeah, it's for a, Jasmine Hall. And she's kept this game one one nothing, Mike, because of her strong play and goal. But the Spartans are getting a lot of offensive chances, and sooner or later they're going to start burying them. So Mr. Rodney wants to get the ball and control some possession time. Oh, high stick on St. Mark's. And here comes Ayers. Great crowd here for the girls matchup. Well, Ruggiero, Ruggiero up top to Ayers. And number 29 in front, that's Jessica Crawford. Up top, she's got it to Kelly Timmons. Takes it behind the net, and the Riders will set up there. They trail 1-0. 17-29 to go, first half from Wesley College. The top 10 girls lacrosse battle here at the Dave Reynolds Lacrosse Festival, Mike. Nothing better. Oh, play in front, Casey Cava was open, but lost possession on a check. Kane Rogers retain. Number four on the day after three boys lacrosse games. That's Burris, number 29. Yeah, it's a, a long day, but a lot of lacrosse fans in the uh, in the house. It's a really good uh, thing every year that Dave Reynolds lacrosse festival, and Wesley does a great job of hosting it. Harris tries to spin away. She gets by Schweitzer. But she loses possession. She goes across the middle. Picks it up, though. Stays with it. Thank and you for joining us. Yeah, this is a fun one. Number 12. I'm not sure how to pronounce that first name. Steele is the last name. Leonard Evans is busy today. He'll be doing the camera for all three games. Errors inside, but her pass is picked off. And a long outlet. And that is Meg Noonan. She's going. She's got Estes on her right. She's. I want to see her in 40 yard. Noonan splits the defenders. Winds up. Oh, oh, did not shoot. Takes it behind and that she'll set up house back there. I want to see her in Gretzky's kitchen. 40 time, Mike. She uh, 
Got down the field and quickly there. 15, 52 to go, first half. Funny ones in the Dover area. Bring us some food. One plain, one, pe one pepperoni. So that's McGargy. Scored a big goal last year in the playoff game against, I believe, Polytech, an overtime winner. Here's Noonan into the circle. Left shot blocked low by Hall, and she pounces on it. Yeah, Mike, she's been impressive in this game. Uh, just some great saves early in this one. Mike, they also got by Archmere 14 to 13 in the semifinal game before falling to Cape Henlopen in the finals. CR coughs that one up, and here comes Estes. That's not Estes. It's number 13, Angie Lorang. I should know Angie by now. I've been watching her play basketball and lacrosse for, and field hockey. This is Claire Estes, number 17. That's two redheads on the Spartans there. She loses it, picks it back up, goes in front. We got a the flag. Car, is that a flag? He's out, shot, and score. I believe that is Kendra Schweitzer, number two. And with 14.20 to go, St. Mark's doubles its lead. It's 2-0. That's two goals for Schweitzer. We said... She had over 200 in her career, and she hasn't disappointed in this one. As she's the only Spartan to get the ball past. She's a Rodney so far, but like they've been controlling the play, winning the phase balls, winning the ground balls, and just doing a great job on the attack. But, but plenty of time left in this one. 14-20 in the 25-minute first quarter. Half. First half, that's what I meant. Can you imagine if they played 25 minute quarters? It'd be awesome. We'd be here all night. <laughs> I'd be calling Dover home. Uh, I'd be uh, texting people for Sixers updates. Here in the capital city. We're going to be doing that anyway. We'll be here for the uh, boys. May have to stop at an establishment and watch the second half of that game. CR, Kava takes the face off. She's looking for number 10 down there. That's Georgia Weiner. Can't get it to a nice defense by the Spartans. Crawford gets the ball back. And we have a whistle. Be a free, be a free uh, position here. Schweitzer called for that one. Kendra Spicy. Yes, she is. Saw her foul of a few basketball games during her time at St. Mark's. Very talented family, the Schweitzer family. A lot of uh, college athletes. A couple of them on the coaching staff. Including mom. Yep. McGargie picks up that loose ball. Another turnover. St. Mark's has it. And here we go the other way. Gets by Ayers. Passes to Estes. And now Claire Estes in control. Across the 30. Bounces one to... Sadie Leonard, and she'll wait for some reinforcements. Almost 12 minutes in, St. Mark's with the 2 nothing lead. Here's Estes behind, surveying the situation. And Jasmine Hall's been in a wall out front, but she can't stop this one from Claire Estes. And it's 3 nothing Spartans, 12.53 to go, first half. So Claire Estes found an opening and uh, came out from behind the net and beats Hall low for the three nothing lead. And we have a timeout on the field. So we're gonna take a, are we taking a break? We're gonna yep. take a break. We'll be back at Miller Stadium here at Wesley College. You're watching Girls Across on 302 Sports. No matter where you are in life, at every stage, we are here for you, for all of life's big moments and everything in between. After all, that's what families are for. We promise to make a positive difference in your financial life and go beyond the norm 
Be a part of the Dover Federal family. Local people, local decisions, Dover Federal Credit Union. The Hadley Group is your local real estate resource. Brian Hadley joined Patterson Schwartz & Associates in 2005. In 2013, Nicole Flora joined Brian, followed by Emma Burnett and Grant Jepp in 2014. That's when the Hadley Group was formed. Patterson Schwartz Associates offer you exceptional knowledge of local market conditions and a commitment to represent you honestly and professionally. So for your next purchase or sale, think The Hadley Group. Visit our website at thehadleygroupre.com. The Hadley Group is your local... And back here at Wesley College. Since we're in Dover, get this back on here. You know, spring, and it feels like spring for a change, is the perfect time to make those necessary home improvements with help from Dover Federal Credit Union. Enjoy no appraisal fees on home equity loans and lines of credit. Act now and take advantage of this limited time offer from Dover Federal Credit Union. Apply anytime, day or night, at DoverFCU.com. That's DoverFCU.com. So, St. Mark's off to a good start. Looking like one of the top teams in the state this uh oh you're only halfway through the first half 12 53 to go they lead three nothing two goals by kendra schweitzer and one by claire estes the last two goals off of cr turnovers so they got to take care of that ball yeah we saw what that did to kate penlope and earlier in the day with the, the turnovers and it's all about securing the ball you do not want to turn it over when you play these top ranked teams because they will make you pay uh, normally convert those turnovers into goals, so. It's still plenty of time left in this one, and only 3 nothing because of the strong play in goal for Cesar Radden. It's a long timeout. Maybe it was a long commercial break for us. Maybe uh, we are supposed to go to two minutes of commercials. Yeah, I ran a minute and a half of them. But that's great because our sponsors pay the bills. So it's great to, like Mike said, get out there at Dover Federal Credit Union State. Let them know the 302 sent you in. They do a great job. And notice they're also a sponsor right here in the stadium. So we are about ready to get back into action. You know, I thought they just dropped their sticks. And, oh, it's a, it's a score, so they didn't have to drop the sticks because we're going to have a face-off. Schweitzer taking the face-off. It looks like Lillian Ayers for CR, one of the better players in Delaware for Cesar Rodney. Kate Penlope and girls across. Keeps all rolling. As they yeah. beat uh, Archmere this morning. Number four this Archmere afternoon. against number one Kate Penlope, and it was 18-5. to five. I had a chance to see Kate at Ursuline earlier this year on a sloppy, wet, slow field, uh, but they took care of Ursuline that day. Ball is up and down and picked and up by. And number three, Polytech got by Padua yesterday, 15-13 in a great girls lacrosse game down here at Polytech. Pass is missed, but Ayers is there to back it up. And she's going to set up up top, 3 nothing. not insurmountable. They want to not fall any farther behind Kylie. Or Casey uh, Calvin unable to
Where you are in life, at every stage, we are here for you, for all of life's big moments, and everything in between. Shot by Schweitzer, she scores again, same place. High to the right of Hall. And that Kendra Schweitzer with goal, number four of the game. Seven, 11. Is the bond of the goal. It looks like they have found a spot that they like that high over the right shoulder of Jasmine Hall. And they're tough to stop. Yep. And Hall had a great, this was great early in this one, but the Spartans, like you said, Mike, they're starting to find uh, their shots falling in and uh, a seven nothing lead. Um, you can see why they're the number two ranked team in the state. Very well balanced offense and defense. St. Mark's wins another face-off, excuse me. <coughs> Got all choked up about that. St. Mark's wins another face-off. My voice has not been the same this week, that's for sure. Rest it up. It's going to be a busy week next week for us. Again, check the 302 sports schedule, but it looks like a baseball game Tuesday. This time it's Noonan going high. Meg Newton, her first goal of the game, and it is 8 nothing Spartans. So, like I said, a baseball, it looks like a possible baseball game Tuesday, a softball game Thursday, a baseball game Friday, a lacrosse game Saturday, baseball game Saturday. So, check our things as we make some final adjustments to our schedule next week. But it looks like it's going to be a busy week for us at 3 Sports. And a great show Wednesday night. Right now we got the uh, Wilmington University's baseball and lacrosse team coming on, plus a possibility of our game of the week, Caravelle and DMA, possibly coming on in softball. So if you can't make out the Hooters on Wednesday night, watch on our 302 Sports YouTube channel. But I strongly recommend you come down to Hooters. It's a great time, great atmosphere. And the food is delicious. Isn't yeah, we have like a good time out there. Well, I got the seafood the one night. It was, uh, oh, it was Ash Wednesday, I believe. 
and it was pretty darn good. And I usually get the wings because they have the wing special. The burgers are excellent, so it's great food, great, great atmosphere, and you get to see a lot of special guests. <laughs> and, and Benny Pinella. So here's a free position for the rider shot off of Stofa. She didn't know where it went, but it was landing right in front of her. So shot for CR as they look for any kind of spark here. Lorang picks it up. She's going to head it back in. 5.45 left in the first half. They lose the ball. It's going to go to the riders, I believe. Again, stay tuned later tonight. We got about 20, 25 minutes after this one ends, Mike. We have Cesar Adden, number three team of boys lacrosse, facing an unranked St. Mark's Spartans team. But like Mike said, they're off to a good start this year. But they're stepping up in competition tonight. And it'll be interesting to see how they fare against the third ranked team in the state of Delaware. That pass goes a little high, but Noel Ruggier is there to get it before it goes out of bounds. 5.08 to go, first half. CR looking for anything. Here's Ayers into the middle, shot just over the net. It'll stay with the Riders as Alexis Burris is nearest that ball when it rolls out of bounds. So they got a uh, shot off the free position and they got a shot there from Ayers just off target. Here's number 16, that's Carly Timmons. She braced toward the net, looking for a little give and go, but Ayers keeps it up top. Mike might have a special guest, annou guest announcer in the nightcap, so tune in. See if Twitter. I know it's not me. I'm not see if, special. See if Twitter Ryan makes it down here. I think he's he's in the area somewhere. I was told he wasn't coming down originally. So yeah, he's he's on his way. He keeps he's texting me here. I think he's actually in the uh, in the neighborhood somewhere. St. Mark's with the ball. And here they come once again, trying to get the number of this truck. That's Meg Noonan, takes it about 80 yards. Behind the net, wraps around, she had an opening. Gets all by herself and scores. So Meg Noonan does that one, her second in a row. Nine nothing, Spartans, 3.54 to go. And just a dominant first half performance. It's coming up the steps, it's my friend. The quarterback of the Spartans, Mike. Delonte Bryant. Delonte Bryant and Will Hoffman. Yep. Hanging out with them. Couple good friends. Bryant came up and introduced himself to me at the softball game yesterday. That's how I was at took in St. Mark's Archmere softball game and, and that was a dandy. A really good game. The Spartans came back from seven runs down to take walk away with a twelve ten winner. And some more bad luck for Archmere today as they lost eight seven to Cape Hell Open. Spent my Friday afternoon watching paddle soccer. It was a pretty good game. Second half was much better than the first half. Play out there, Goldie Beacom. At the and bottom of the big hill. And I watched a little soccer yesterday. It's Archmer did get revenge on the soccer field. A 4-1 winner. Spartans again on the attack. Here's Estes being chased by Ayers. Takes it behind the net. See a lot of St. Mark's boys players are milling around. Spartans slowed up. They are up nine. Do not need the offense here. That is about as dominant performance, first half performance as the Spartans could hope for. And we saw that with Slazy M taking an 11 nothing halftime lead in the boys game over Cape Hell Open. So a couple big. Here's Noonan up front to Schweitzer. Saved by Hall. Nice man errors. Tries to go upstairs again with Hall. I know, she, I know Hall's given up nine goals. But she's been pretty good in net for the Caesar Rodney Riders. There's a uh, violation on the Riders. It's going to go back. To, oh, it's actually stay with the riders. Yeah, it was riders ball. They fooled us up here, Mike. It's not easy to do to yeah. fool us too. It's pretty easy to fool me. Yep. So Siobhan Smith for the riders. Fumbles that one out of bounds. They go back to the Spartans. Here's Sadie Leonard. Nice pass. Oh, 
goes past the intended receiver there, picked up by Hall, and she gets it to Lillian Ayers. And Ayers looking for Ruggiero, but the pass is too high, and if it rolls out of bounds, it'll be Spartan ball, it does, over the blue line. Goes on back the other way. Paige Vigargi is gonna bring this one in. Long pass ahead. Leonard's got it. In the middle to Meg Noonan. That is not Meg Noonan. That's O'Neill. And here's Leonard behind it. That is Meg Noonan, the lefty. Claire Estes holding the ball. We have 90 seconds to go in half number one. Noonan to Estes. They reverse. They're just kind of taking turns back there. Noonan is checked, and that's going to be a violation on number four, Brianna Williams. So she's going to have to line up five yards behind Noonan there in the uh, end zone to our right. Clock stops in the last two minutes. So Noonan's got a couple steps on her defender. Here she goes. Here's Claire Estes. Estes spins away from a defender's shot. And I believe it is a save. It is. <coughs> Excuse moi. By Here Hall. Comes Ayers. Ball's checked. She picks it up. Across midfield. Whacked from behind by Schweitzer. What a nice play by Kathy She Schweitzer. stole the ball. Gets it to Paige Vigargi. She deeks by Burris. 36 seconds to go. Vigargi spins away from a defender there, Alyssa Wilson, and gets it over to Noonan. Noonan up top, and I believe that is Sadie Leonard holds it, gets it to Schweitzer, and we have a whistle. I can't tell which referee blew the whistle. It looks like it's going to be a free position play for Kendra Schweitzer, and I think I know what's going to happen here. Yes. Straight ahead, and a deke and a score by Schweitzer. So Kendra Schweitzer makes this 10 nothing St. Mark, 17 seconds to go. Is that, number one. is that a six pack challenge for her? I'm not sure I lost track of how many she had. I thought that was her six, but don't hold me to it. I kind of did the same thing when I was trying to fix the picture from earlier in this half. As I, you didn't hear me for about 10 minutes <laughs> as I was trying to Mess with our camera. Got 17 seconds left in this first half. A first half dominant by the Spartans of St. Mark's. So we got 17 seconds remaining. Schweitzer has been all over the field tonight. Wins another faceoff. They got 10 seconds. Here's Estes. See if they can add one more. She gets it inside to O'Neill. She tucks it inside that post. Gabrielle O'Neill with her first goal of the game. Make it an even 11. All right, it's not even, but it's 11 runs. 11 and the, runs, 11 goals. And because it was a 10, more than 10, that ends the first half. So after 25 minutes of play, it's been all St. Mark's today. They lead Cesar Rodney 11 to nothing. We'll be back in a few minutes. You're watching High School Girls Lacrosse on 302sports.com.
That's what families are for. We promise to make a positive difference in your financial life and go beyond the norm. Be a part of the Dover Federal family. Local people, local decisions, Dover Federal Credit Union. No matter where you are in life, at every stage, we are here for you, for all of life's big moments and everything. Life's too short to hate your home. Remodel your home with the pros voted Delaware's number one home improvement company. Ferris Home Improvements has something for every homeowner at their new showroom on a corner of Kirkwood Highway and Harmony Road in Newark, Delaware. Explore products and layouts with the area's top designers. Touch and feel products that inspire your dream space. Ferris Home Improvements pride in the details make them the area's best in roofing, windows and doors, siding, decks, kitchens and bathrooms. Want a professional no pressure remodel? Go see the best at the Big Shamrock on Kirkwood Highway. Ferris Home Improvements, quality workmanship from a neighbor you can trust. Life's too short to hate your home. Real estate resource. Brian Hadley joined Patterson Schwartz and Associates in 2005. In 2013, Nicole Flora joined Brian, followed by Emma Burnett and Grant Jepp in 2014. That's when the Hadley Group was formed. Patterson Schwartz Associates offer you exceptional knowledge of local market conditions and a commitment to represent you honestly and professionally. So for your next purchase or sale, think The Hadley Group. Visit our website at thehadleygroupre.com. The Hadley Group is your local real estate resource. Brian Hadley joined Patterson Schwartz & Associates in 2005. In 2013, Nicole Flora joined Brian, followed by Emma Burnett and Grant Jepp in 2014. That's when the Hadley Group was formed. Patterson Schwartz Associates offer you exceptional knowledge of local market conditions and a commitment to represent you honestly and professionally. So for your next purchase or sale, think The Hadley Group. Visit our website at thehadleygroupre.com. The Hadley Group is your local... Welcome to Hooters. Have a seat wherever you like. Hooters of Newark is located at 136 Astro Shopping Center, Newark, Delaware. Come in day or night to watch your favorite teams and sports on our many TVs. It's a great, fun-filled environment that is kid-friendly. Our craveable food menu has all the appetizers, burgers, salads, tacos, seafood, you name it, as well as our world-famous Hooters wings, which are the official wings of 302sports.com. I'm Scott Cameron from Solo Concepts. Solo Concepts is an award-winning restaurant group on the culinary coast with 10 locations. We're a chef-driven group. Come check us out. See you soon. Solo Concepts believes in the vision of our founder, Matt Haley. Cook beautiful, simple food, develop the people we work with, and make the world a better place. Solo Concepts on the culinary coast with 10 locations. From Lois, Delaware to Fenwick Island, come check us out. Mr. Italian began his career in home finance in 2002 as a mortgage consultant. Since 2002, Brian has helped over 1,000 home buyers achieve their dreams of owning a home. Brian's knowledge of current market conditions and his detailed evaluation of buyers' finances ensures that each buyer will receive the best mortgage to fit their needs. Brian is often commended on how efficient and effortless he makes the mortgage process for everyone from first-time home buyers to investors to experienced buyers. Unique Image opened for business in Wilmington, Delaware in 1979 with one focus, wowing our customers with great products and even greater customer service. 30 years later, we are still doing exactly that. Whether you're looking for marketing tools to promote your business, gifts for your employees or clients, or planning a special event, we're here with the voice of experience to help you every step of the way for your complete satisfaction. Visit our new showroom in the Mill Creek Shopping Center, 4577 Kirkwood Highway.
All right, and welcome back to Scott Miller Stadium, Wesley College. Mike Lang, Jason Winchell, Nick Halliday, Big Ed Halliday, Len Evans, and soon Ryan Cole Santhi to join you for the uh, Dave Reynolds Lacrosse Festival. This game hasn't been very festive so far, unless you're St. Mark's. They have 11. St. Mark's yet, uh, sees Roddy yet to score as we enter the second half of the game. And uh, this is a dominating performance by the Spartans thus far. They've winning all the face-offs to get to the ground balls, and they uh, they finally solved Jasmine Hall. And she was rock solid in the first half, but they found a way around her. Just remember, after this game, we will have the boys' game coming up. 25 minutes after the girls' games end, Mike. So... It will be on a sep separate stream. So the teams are back on the field, and uh, St. Mark's just pretty dominating performance thus far, led by. Young lady in the face-off circle, Kendra Schweitzer. I didn't count up her goals at halftime. I was too busy running around the campus here. <coughs> I think she had the six-pack challenge, but again, not official. Probably making the coach happy. It'd be a nice ride home. Coach is also mom. And that was up in the air. And Lynn Ayers wins this face-off. CR off to a good start here in half number two. We believe we're going to have the running clock. We'll find out at some point. We did. It was the clock it runs most of the time anyway. It kicked in the last four seconds after St. Mark's scored. Then the Here's first a half. Pass out front. And the ball is fumbled and picked up by Jackie Stoke, but her outlet pass intercepted by Crawford. She's got the ball at the top of the circle where she's being marked by Schweitzer. Pass over to Ruggiero. And she is fouled by St. Mark's number 23, Kara Darty, who's in the game. And she will have the free position here. Ruggiero to turn, turn so I can see your number, please. Number one, Casey Tava. Tava in front to Ayers. Ayers looked for a little bit of space, but ball's poked away by number 11, Megan Kane. Nice play by Kane. Ball goes out of bounds. We'll go back to CR. Crawford's going to bring this one in, but a nice play by Kane to thwart a scoring chance. You see the St. Mark's boys in the end zone to our right warming up. They've got a tall task tonight against the Caesar Rodney boys team. They are somewhere down there. I saw them earlier. Their bus just got into town. Yeah, they're a fun offensive team to watch. So tune in tonight and watch them. Here come the Spartans. There's Meg Noonan, tries to spin, loses the ball, and it is picked up in front by Gracie Bachman. So CR escapes some damage there. Ayers out to, that was Crawford. She loses the ground ball to Noonan. And the Spartans in white, going right to left on your Phone, tablet, computer, television, wherever you happen to be watching us. Thanks for joining us on 302 Sports. Thanks to the folks here at Wesley College and with the Dave Reynolds Lacrosse Festival for having us down today. And uh, thank you for the nice weather to whoever's responsible for that. We had tomorrow 80% chance of rain. It is going to be cold Monday. 100% chance of rain. About two inches of rain expected between Sunday and, and Monday, Mike, so. There's some CR players across the way in the bright yellow shirts and the blue shorts and the rest of the team up in the bleachers. There will be the road team also in that game. Noonan out front, but she is stoned by Jasmine Hall. Nice stop there for Hall. I'd say that's an 11 zip. I'd say that's at least 10 sh stops for, for her in goal. We'll have to watch the tape and see if we have any 302 Sports Play of the Week candidates. We had a few from that softball game the other night. 
Lillian Ayers, number 23, is going to inbound here, standing in front of Angel Lorang and Paige McGargie. Waiting for the whistle. There it is, we're underway. Her pass to Kylie Comstock. Lorang chases her down. Cannot check it out of her stick though. Here's Kava. You can tell the difference with the Spartans. Their speed is just incredible, both offensively and defensively. Air sits up up top. Yeah, just looking at this roster. Senior, 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 senior. That's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Looks like ten seniors on the roster for St. Mark's. Yes. A lot of experience. Playoff experience last year. Right, here's a pass in front to Kava. Oh, she loses it. Rolls in on Stofa. So the shutout intact. 20, 52 to go. Here in half number two, we play two halves in the girls, four quarters in the boys. Kind of the opposite of, oh, I think, not sure what happened there. That ball was lost. It's Sadie Leonard, I mean, they just lost it in the in the clouds or something. You can tell she ducked out of the way, that one. You know, she didn't want to, she just lost sight of it. Goes back to CR, here's Crawford. To Ayers, Ayers has been the quarterback out there. She's in on Schweitzer, gets around her, but Schweitzer gets her from behind. That shot inches wide to the right of Jackie Stofa. And it remains 11-0. Ciara will keep the ball, but that was maybe their best opportunity of the game. She bounced that one low, had Stofa beat, but just wide. There's errors again to the right of Stofa. Passes in front. That ball is checked away and the ground ball picked up by Leonard. And Sadie Leonard passes it off to Kane. <laughs> Kane around errors and she's across the 40. Back to the middle of the field. She's got McGargy. Guard is going to go behind the net and set up there. They had a lot of success in the first half coming out from behind that net. So here's Estes in front, wide open. <laughs> Megan Noonan, but she is stuffed by Jasmine Hall. What a great save. Yeah, she's Spartans been, get the ball back. She's been incredible in, go in goal, Mike, as uh, she's faced the Spartans onslaught. That was one on nothing on that one, and she uh, got that big stick head out there. Nice play by Jasmine Hall. Here's another play, Schweitzer. She does it again. Kendra Schweitzer scores 18.35 to go. She cuts in front, takes the pass, and the left-hand shot into the net. And Mike, by the time they face it off, it might be less than 18 minutes left. Again, in lacrosse, the only time it really does stop is after goals, but with a 12 nothing lead, it just runs and runs and runs. I told you to be under 18 minutes for the face off. Schweitzer, she's a player. She's there ready to go. Yeah, she's <coughs> no doubt in my mind the player of the game. So it is, whoops. Boy, you know, this is driving me insane. 6.37. The other game was scheduled to start at uh, 7. 20, 25 minutes. So maybe they can games. play the boys down here and the girls over here. So this game uh, should end in about 17 minutes and 30 seconds. Remember, we were late starting this one and late starting the Slazy Anna Cape. Probably looking at about a 7.20 start for that CR St. Mark's boys game. But yeah, Sally's Cape was 3.25 instead of 3. This one was about 25 minutes late, so we're about 25 minutes late. Kava runs through the zone, but some great defense there by St. Mark's. Keeps them at bay. And they're going to try to get something going from up top. Air is in front. She's got Ruggiero, but too much, <coughs> excuse me, I'm all choked up. Too much St. Mark's defense, and here come the Spartans once again. That is Schweitzer on the run. Passes it to her right. 
Didn't get the number on that truck. All the way in front, shot, bounces, and in. Meg Noonan with the goal, her third. Make it 13, two nil. Nice play by. I think we've said it over and over again. Nice play by Kendra Schweitzer. You know, we saw her sisters play and we saw her brother Rhett play. And uh, I, I first met Kendra when she was in eighth grade. And uh, Rhett told me she was an athlete. I said, Rhett, all your sisters are athletes. You're an athlete. And I said, the whole family's an athlete. And uh, he said they have a garage full of lacrosse sticks. And he said, Kendra's going to be as good as any of us. Yeah, well, He was not wrong. No, she's going to University of Delaware next year to help out that lacrosse program there. Uh, I know last year, right around the state championship game, she scored her 200th goal in her career against the St. Mark's. And she has not let up so far this year. She is a scoring machine. But she does it all, Mike. She wins face-offs. She's a great, great at distributing the ball. Uh, like you said, just a great athlete. And she plays field hockey and basketball. Yep. Of course, normally when you get to college, you just tend to play one sport. Well, we know St. Mark's is a lot of sports and a lot of multi-sport athletes on the boys and girls side. And we'll see some names on the boys roster that we will recognize. Same thing with uh, Slazy Anima earlier. We had a lot of football, uh, uh, lacrosse boys, you tend to get a lot of football players that play both football and lacrosse. Here's a steal by McGargy. She's got it to, uh, out in front to Noonan. She is stuffed by Hall. That was like Gabrielle O'Neill who took that pass from McGargy and found Noonan all alone in front. But what a great save by Jasmine Hall, and she has been under assault all day. She's been really good in that, Mike. You, you might look at the score and say, she gave up 13 goals, but I bet you she's faced close to 30 shots. And she's been made some nice saves. That one bounces by her, but it goes behind the net. I think she got, yeah, like, like Nick Holiday just said, she's standing on her head down there, yeah. Mike. She's been outstanding. You, know, you, you said it. She's given up 13, but that, a lot of those were uh, no doubt about it. And she's blocked a few no doubt about it shots tonight, too. So the Riders with the ball. 13.55 left in this contest. Hall oh, gets it to number 13. That's Elizabeth Isaacs. Another turnover, Spartans in business once again. Meg Noonan, she's being marked by Brianna Williams. Behind the net she goes. Wraps around, looks for some offense. Nice deke and a bouncer in for Paige McGargy. So Paige McGargy's on the scoreboard. I believe that she scored earlier in the first half. I was going to say, I think she scored once in the she first half. Once. Of course, I'm still, I'd say Kendra has seven. <laughs> we're out of a timeout. And that's, we'll stop the clock. So with 13 away, we're going to take a break here on 302. You're watching High School Girls Lacrosse. We'll be right back. After all, that's what families are for. We promise to make a positive difference in your financial life and go beyond the norm. Be a part of the Dover Federal family. Local people, local decisions. Dover Federal Credit Union. No matter where you are in life, at every stage, we are here for you. For all of life's big moments and everything in between. After all, that's what families are for. We promise to make a positive difference in your financial life and go beyond the norm. Be a part of the Dover Federal family. Local people, local decisions. Dover Federal. We are back at Scott Miller Stadium. Mike Lang, Jason Winchell. And Jason, do you know Unique Image is a full-service custom products company offering everything from apparel to promotional products that actually drive results to graphic design and vehicle wraps, plus so much more. Visit us on the web at uniqueimage.org or stop by our showroom, conveniently located in the Mill Creek Shopping Center at the intersection of Kirkwood Highway and Limestone Road. Unique Image. You envision. 
we create. Thank you to Unique Image and Dover Federal Credit Union and all our sponsors here at 302 Sports. We couldn't do it without them, and we couldn't do it without you. I think it's a 50-50 draw. You got your ticket ready, Ryan? You ready? Mike and th all our 302 Sports gear. Unique image. It all is unique, that's for sure. It's really good. And the winner is right in front of us. All right, hey, press box could use some pizza. And here she comes, the uh, and a Sixers win. Winner, winner. I need dinner. So a, another 50-50 drawing, and another happy customer here at Scott Miller Stadium. 14 nothing Spartans. We have 13:08 to go, and uh, once that clock starts, it only stops for a timeout or an injury. And we don't want any injuries, that's for sure. And really, we don't need any timeouts, but CR is just a barrage by St. Mark's today, or they came to play today. Yeah, and you expect that, the second-ranked team um, in the state, and you can see why they are very athletic, but like you said, like very senior-oriented. So if they're going to end the Cape Dynasty, this is the year to do it. There are eight seniors also on CR. Two of them are, are goalies, but. We have a lacrosse expert here. Awesome, Ryan. man. Ryan, uh, Ryan better get ready for that boys game. <coughs> better do some homework. I know, Ryan. Ryan, listen to my voice. I can barely talk. You better get ready. Jason's been talking all day. He might need a break. Uh. I think I'll just produce the next game. All right, so we are about ready to get this uh, action started today. Jason's a four, it's the 14th, right? Yes. So some uh, while we wait for this face-off, some baseball scores. Dover three, Sussex Central one, St. Elizabeth five, Tower Hill four. William Penn, two, Conrad, one. St. Mark's nine, Hodgson, That's one. That's the AI tournament, Mike. So William Penn will be playing in the championship game against the winner of AI Tattnall. That is tomorrow. Well, Let's that will be AI they're playing. So it will be back underway. AI. And William Penn. For the championship. William Penn's had some nice wins this week, Mike. Beating Hodgson. Permitting. And Conrad. Yeah, it was a nice week for the Colonials. Uh, how about Del Castle, 16 over Depps. Friends, 18, Red Lion, 2. Yeah, that was a surprising score when I saw that earlier. DMA, today, 8, Smyrna, 1. These are all baseball scores. Apo, 5, Cape Hamilton, 4. It's a mild surprise there. Yeah, we mentioned that earlier. Yep. St. Andrews, 11, over First State Military Academy, 1. So any, these are baseball scores. Any Sally's Newark? Not on here. I'm about to check Twitter later on. Boys lacrosse, Mount Pleasant, 12, William Penn, 4. So I saw the uh, Green Knights the other day against St. E's, a very entertaining match up at Penny Hill. I like it because it's real close to home for me. There's a, a loose ball picked up on the guards. You haven't forgotten about the ladies. We're just trying to get some scores in. St. Andrews, 15, Wilmington Christian, 4. This is boys lacrosse. Dover 10, Polytech 9, that was right here. There's a shot and a score. That is Megan Kane on the board for the Spartans. And it's 15 to nil. That goal came in about 11.40 to go. They'll probably be down to 11 minutes by the time we face this one off. This gives us a few seconds here. Friends, 21. Oh, this was yesterday, Tower Hill 7. So only the three lacrosse finals in there. Chris Lazy Adam. Uh, beat up on Cape Henlopen today. Girls lacrosse, Sanford 13, AI 4. It was Dover 21, Apo 10. Cape Henlopen, we mentioned 18 to 5 over Archmere. Tower Hill 15, Smyrna 7. Mount Pleasant 8, Caravel 7. In that game, and that's it for the girls lacrosse for today. Soccer, we get a chance here. We got... St. George's 2, Red Lion 0. Is that face First off? win for St. George's this year, Mike. It's been a rough year for him in Division 1. We're going to have to redo this face-off. That's going to be a violation. It's going to go to CR, and that is Siobhan Smith, number 
17 is going to bring it in. She's got it to Ayers. Picks it up on the bounce. Sanford won Indian River nil in girls soccer. So I believe that's the first. Uh, Sanford, a nice win over IR. It's still a pretty quality program down there at Indian River. So a nice win for the uh, for Warriors. Ayers goes in, weaves her way in, shoots it just high. In that Sanford game. An own goal, Jason. You hate to see a 1-0 game go with an own goal. Yeah, for absolutely. I are still going to win the Henlope and South, I believe, Mike. As they, uh, DMA 9, Belmarty Conrad 0 in the girls soccer. Damn. And whistle, we're going to have a reposition, I believe. DMA's had a good week. They beat Middletown, Newark Charter, and now Conrad. So here we go. Siobhan Smith with a shot. Stopped by Stofa. She has not been called on to make many today, but she makes another one there. Ayers picks off the outlet pass. TR. See, Ayers can weave her way in. Gets it in front to Kava. Shot wide. Comstock's got it. I believe it's going to be a free position for Cesar Rodney. See what Mike. the call is and where the ball's placed, I believe. That's Kava's right. Kava's getting right at the top of the circle. Yep. Free position. Here she is. It's a one on one. She gets it, whips it in there. Score! Casey Kava breaks the shutout, 9-16 to go on a free position, and she goes low and beats Jacqueline Stofa. It's 15-1. to So they keep fighting and keep fighting and gets on the board. Kava on the free position. So Stofa made a Nice save on the shot before that. Softball scores. Polytech, 8. St. George is 6. Hodson, 14. Glasgow, 4. William Penn, 11. St. Mark, 7. Apo, 4. Sees Rodney, 1. And Dover, 1. AI, 0. Mike, a local athlete, Bill Billy Sullivan, pitches a gem for the Blue Hen today in a 5-1 Win over UNC. Congrats, Wellington. Billy. He might be watching tonight. You never know. He's a loyal Spartan. Just a fabulous kid. And an all-around good guy. We like Bill. Always stops and says hi to us when, when he's in the neighborhood. Last year we did a Little League baseball game, and he came on and helped us out. Volunteered this year, coaching with St. Mark's basketball. Here, speaking of St. Mark's, in front. And that is a goal so they get back that goal, trying to catch the number of that one. I think that was Frida, Callie Frida, number 10, on the board with that shot. It came with about 7.50 to go. So a nice play there by Callie Frida. And when we get this one started, you about 7.15 left on the clock, maybe a little bit less. As we are getting down to the home stretch here. Hey, That's it's been a long day. I've been down here since before 1 o'clock. Yeah, I haven't. When did I get here? When did I get here? I don't remember. Uh, after 4.30. After 4. Yeah, it was about 4.20 that I got in. Left Wilmington at about 3.09, North Wilmington. And uh, crossed my way down Route One. So you should get a you should get a ride it back with Nick. He would have been down here in about forty two minutes. Yeah, I would have had to walk down here though. Ground ball, and there's the whistle. And it will be what's the call? We get down at six twenty seven. Not sure who the ball's gonna end up with. I believe it's going to be CR ball. So Siobhan Smith picks it up. She's going to have a restart here. Ayers. Oh, Jason, I think she turned around just before that ball was in there. Stickhead. It's happened to all of us on the baseball field. You start to pick it up before you have it. Angel Lorang driving the middle. She's going to take it all the way. 
Goes behind the net. Oh, spin move by Larang. Nice, gets herself free. Shot, score. Angel Larang puts it home. St. Mark's increases the lead. That could be a play of the week, Mike. You were matching earlier. Uh, that's a good candidate right there. The great spin move, and she powers it in. Uh, but what a performance by the St. Mark's team today. Another multi-sport athlete. We know Angel from basketball. Where's that number 13? Also a uh, senior. We've been watching her play multi-sports for a few years now. There's a nice crowd filing in for this boys game tonight. Yeah, it's going to be the uh, game of the evening. Uh, and this is, I believe this is McGargy. I'm not sure who's taking this face off. Paige McGargy, indeedy. Smith had it, but it was checked out. And the Spartans get it. That's Sadie Leonard trying to corral that loose ball. Now she's got it. See Coach Schweitzer over there has uh, not had to worry too much this afternoon. And while we were, now we have a goal waved off. Yep. No goal. No goal. We're going to get uh, Wes McCauley, the official, the NHL official. He's going to skate out the center ice and go. And that's no goal. Crease violation, I believe. You know, our uh, our analyst for the boys game, Ryan here, he's a big National Predators fan. And they won today, apparently. I, I thought there was only high school sports today. No, a for five hockey games today, four more tomorrow, four basketball games today. You know, Coach Schweitzer, how do you do this to me? That's a number 24, not on the roster. I went down and talked to her before the game. So hopefully, uh, hope that's just a cramp on the other side. We see St. Mark's player getting some treatment over there. Spartans with the ball, we have three and a half to go. As most of the starters are out of the game. Not all of them, most of them. Here's one of them, Paige McGargy, into the crease behind the net, and they will set it up again. And I, I'm sorry, I don't know who 24 is. Not, I don't have her on my roster. She had the ball in front. Loose ball. Picked up by number nine, Gracie Bachman. Here she comes. Casey Cobb with the goal scorer for CR. She's being marked by Meg Noonan, and we have a, a violation. CR will keep the ball here. Into Ayers. Ayers looks for an opening, but some help defense. Seals that off. Shot by Cobb. A nice save by Stofa. Out front. This one's off of the... Shin pads of Stofa. CR, they're going to go to the final whistle here. Long outlet pass picked up by Sadie Leonard. She crosses midfield. She's got some room. Leonard to Meg Noonan. Noonan is marked by Brianna Williams. Nice play by Williams. Oh, the foul is called. It's going to stay with the Spartans. So she's got a path between her and the net if she wants it. Goes to the side of the net. She'll set up behind to number 24. This is where we need Ryan to come in and tell us number 24 is just from walking around the halls of St. Mark's. You might need him for the boys game. No, yeah, I'm sure I will. No number on the rosters. Saw Lucy Bracken out there, number eight. There's a pass in front. Nice save. Coaches, please update <laughs> those rosters for us. That is number nine, Gabrielle Marine. Here's McGargy. We're in the final minute of this one, Mike. 
and a goal. McGarvey passes, and let's get the number of that scorer for you. I want to say number nine. Let's see, I want to not lose sight of that. Oh, Kara Darty just picked her up. Give her the big bear hug. Let's see who that is. I still have not seen the number. I lost track, Jason. I lost the player in that middle of all that. I think I'm looking at the right player. It is number nine, and that would be Gabrielle Marine, a senior. There's a check, 2-1, and that's going to do it. A dominating performance for the second rank Spartans, and they take this one 18 to one. Jason, it's an uh, outstanding uh, job here by the Spartans this afternoon. Yeah, they played really well, Mike, and like you said, they are. Uh, you can see why they're a second rank team in the state in the 302 sports rankings. Uh, they just dominated performance from start to finish. Beat a very good ranked Caesar Rodney team by 17 goals, um, and it could have been more without the stellar play and goal. We're going to call the player of the game. We're going to give it to that Kendra Schweitzer. Yeah, why not? Lost track of the number of goals. She was dominant on face-offs, played some great defense, and uh, pass scored. She did it all for the Spartans today. Kendra Schweitzer, your player of the game, and I believe that's going to do it for this stream. We'll be back in about 25 minutes for the Cesar Rodney boys and the St. Mark's boys here from Scott Miller Stadium. Thanks for watching, everybody. You're watching high school lacrosse on 302sports.com. See you in a few.